I'd like to call the Winter Fire House Building Committee meeting to order, please, August 28th, 2023. It's 602 in the DeLeo Center. We are being televised live on WCAT. And also, this has been mentioned before, but I have seen it on YouTube within 48 hours of the meeting. So if somebody misses it on WCAT or doesn't get WCAT, you can pick it up on YouTube. The first thing we'll have is a um, roll call. Jim Letieri. Yes. Chief Wiley. Karen Chavez, myself here. Chris Boyce. Here. Josh Castellano. Tom Trudina. Frank Constantino. Kim Dimes. Here. Jill Dua. Here. Paul Flanagan. Here. Larry Powers. Here. Tony Marino. Here. Joe Aiello. Jonathan DeMauro. Here. Chuck Flanagan. And our honorary person, Dick Banks. We please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The next thing is the minutes from the August 21st meeting, and everybody has gotten those. Could I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Second. Thierry. Second by Mr. Powers. All those in favor, any corrections? One correction. Um, in my verbiage, I said irrelevant, and in the minutes, it says relevant. OK. Worth mentioning. <laughs> As it, that was a major deal. That's that fine. Was, it was big sense, uh, irrelevant. And then um, I think Kessel and Blues was spelt incorrectly. That was the only other typo that I, but that's it. K-A-E-S-T-L-E. K-A-E. Yeah. -E. I think it's K-E. It's spelt incorrectly in the minutes. I thought there was. K-A-E. That's OK. Oh, yeah, it, on um, page two. Hannah, uh, Kessel and Booz, Kessel is spelled wrong. So once those corrections are made, all those approved the minutes, everybody say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Prior to this meeting at 530, we did our first public relations subcommittee, and Mr. Letiri will fill us in on that. Thank you. Uh, we did meet earlier at 5.30 here at the DeLeo Senior Center, and we discussed uh, some upcoming public relations. We have here, which we have now, is a copy of the FAQ, which will be coming out. This is in draft form, but we have passed them out to the attendees here tonight. Um, we are also in the process, which should be up within a handful of days a website. The website address will be www.winthropfirestation.com. Um, that will have all the frequently asked questions and answers. It will also have a link to the video where we uh, did a tour of the Pauline Street Station and the Shirley Street Station. We will also have uh, pictures from uh, we did two firehouse visits, one to Lexington, one to Woburn. So we will have pictures of that. We will have small video clips from different meetings. Um, we will have a place where you'll be able to ask questions or make a comment. Um, there will be um, meeting dates of upcoming meetings along with public forums. Uh, so we're very uh, happy that that will be up and done soon. We will be also sending postcards out to every resident, informing them of the website, and also having a QR code so they could just scan it and get into it. Uh, and we're hoping to have all the information possible. We also discussed the fact that, that we will be presenting probably at the second public hearing, which I believe is September 25th. We will be presenting the plan B, or the second half of this plan for the future, which would involve a joining of the police station. And uh, we will have that plan to present on the 25th of September at the second public forum. Um, 
Anything else at the Public Relations Subcommittee? And that was it for tonight's meeting. The only other thing we discussed too at the Public Relations um, Subcommittee meeting was when you do use the website and if you do send in comments or questions, we're going to ask you, please, for your name. We want to just to be sure that people are not from coming, you know, using the website from out of town, giving comments that are not appropriate for the citizens of the town of Winthrop. Uh, we're now going to have a public comment period. Um, the only thing I'm going to ask is when you approach the microphone, please state your name and your address clearly so that Hannah can get it. Um, for the minutes. Anybody have any public comment? Yes. Diane Marchese, I live at 81 Washington Ave. I just moved back after 29 years in the fine city of Peabody, so here we go, right? Um, I have two questions. Regarding the location, you're in the fire department, you two, gen okay. A fire doubles in size every 30 seconds. Given the location on Winthrop Street, how probable is it that the fire truck is not going to make it to the end of Point Shirley. Has anybody considered the time it's going to take to get from Winthrop Street to Point Shirley if there isn't a fire station down on Shirley Street? Well, ma'am, we, um, Chief Wiley, Chief Wiley would have a better answer for you, but I, right now I could just, we follow uh, NFPA 1710, which uh, is the standard of response time from when we get, uh, when the bell goes out, so when we respond to the scene, yep. uh, we have to remain under, I believe, um, five, five minutes, five, five minutes, twenty, five minutes, five minutes, little, and twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. Yep. Okay. And keep that at a ninety percent rate, and and I'm sure Chief Wiley has done the math and all this stuff. We can get to from Winthrop Street to Point Shirley and. Definitely under that. In under five minutes? Okay. Well, that's a good thing to hear. Yeah, it's five. It's it's an ISO score that the town receives, and this affects people's insurance and such, yeah. right? Because if you don't live near a fire hydrant or near adequate response time. Um, and I, I know the chief did go over this uh, prior, but they grade every city in town, and the grades go from 1 to 10. In this situation, 1 is the best, 10 is the worst. The vast majorities of cities and towns in the state receive a 5, which is the average score. We received a 4, and we've been notified that this will not affect that score right. at all. And it is, I, I believe it's 5 minutes and 20 seconds that you're supposed to be able to get to any residents in town. Okay. Um, yeah, um, I don't know you, ma'am, but Larry Powers, I was the fire chief, losing track, several fire chiefs ago. <laughs> um, but it, when I was chief, we did response time studies for the fire station study we were doing at the time. And we're well within, no matter where, one, the farthest part of town to the farthest part of town is still well within less than five minutes. Okay. No, nope, I'm glad to hear that. Yep. Then my second question has to do with the due diligence report done in 2018. Can we get a copy of that? From what I understand, Castle Booth's feasibility study, whatever you want to refer to it as, did a study in 2018 where they looked at 10 properties. Yes. I just want to see what the 10 properties were and why yep. any of those 10 were discounted and this property on Winthrop Street. Yeah, we'll put that on the website. Okay. In, in 2018, they came out and they did like a schematic and it had different scores for different yep. criteria. And they listed locations from the Little League A-field to the seventh hole of the golf course, which ended up being the two that they presented. These uh, sites also include Muffin Town. They include the Walden Street... Um, the Walden Street basketball courts. They included um, expert auto property. Uh, so various properties okay. throughout the town, including the present fire station. And um, yeah, we could we could put that. Okay, that's and, all I want to say. And they ended of. up presenting the Little League A-field and the seventh hole of the golf course at that okay. point. This is online now. This is from- I've seen, yes. This is from 11 4 Yep. And okay. this one is there now. And that explains which it, 10 were looked at? This explains is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep. Okay. Three and why ten. each one yep. was looked at and Doesn't kind of graded, say I guess? Why it's Just, like a grade, yes. Okay. That's all I wanted. Yeah. Unfortunately, and the being question, new to town, I'm not no, into all of okay. the past stuff, and I just want to make sure. Madam Chairwoman, good. just another thing not why do we want one station? The better question or the better answer is why we had two. And that's because. Uh, 
the steamers were pulled by horses. And the other thing is the town was split by railroad tracks and a train. So conditions were mu much different back then. And some of your questions can be answered on page three, too, if you look at. If I could read it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. That's fine, but it is there, Diane. Okay. All right, thank you very much, everybody. Kathleen. Hi, Kathleen Capuccio, 49 Waldemar Ave. I apologize. I just was reading through this wicked quick, like, to see if I had any thoughts. Um, so these really aren't questions to be answered, just more thoughts. Um, These are just the uh, frequently asked questions that we've been getting the most and we're trying oh, to Oh, no, precisely. Yes, no, I was just looking at the questions and just had a couple of thoughts oh, sure. on those, just that might be helpful to the <clears throat> residents. i got to put the readers on so I can see. Um, so it just me. so when it talked about um, what were the reasons for deciding against renovating the existing fire stations, um, one question or one thought that came to my mind, because it wasn't, you know, address there um, was cost a factor because it doesn't reference cost. When we talked about um, doing the new middle high school, it was a huge selling point, if you will, for the vote that the cost to re renovate and redo the old middle school into the high school far outweighed having a new middle school built. So I just didn't know if that, it's just a thought maybe that could be addressed. Um, my other thought was, um, it talked about the future needs. Um, I have to say, sorry, sorry, I got these back on. Um, oh, adequate for the present equipment, which I understand, let alone future needs. So I was thinking with that question, when it talks about future needs, is that future needs of the fire department or the town's future thoughts of having a combined fire, police station, or stations, or public safety building. So again, that was just a thought there. Um, sorry, putting these again on. <laughs> I have to go back and forth because I'm nearsighted and farsighted. Um, how will the town council and town manager address the concerns of the meat market? Um, I fully respect everyone's thoughts on the meat market. Um, I, I think it needs to be clear that and this is no disrespect to the meat market. Um, it's been falsely stated that the meat market is the largest tenant. The meat market is not the largest tenant at the Wadsworth building. Harbor, first, or Harbor, I think it's called Harbor City Church is the largest tenant. They actually just signed an amendment to their lease four or five months ago. So I think that needs to be clarified. Um, and I think too, you know, again, and there's no disrespect to the meat market, you know, we need to not just focus on the meat market. There are other tenants in that property. You know, again, I'm not a member of Harbor City Church, so I have no, I'm not sure if I'm saying the name right, um, but they're wonderful people and they do a lot for this community. So I just think it would, it's not a great idea because it's been said too much, meat market, meat market, meat market. You know, there are other tenants there. Um, so I just think, and I know in the eminent domain process, of course, the other tenants are addressed. But I just think for, quite frankly, public relations reasons and honestly respect, you know, for the other businesses that are there that we need not forget about them. And um, I probably have more thoughts, but I wasn't able to go through the rest of it. But thank you. On, uh, Madam Chairwoman, on, on that one, Kathleen, on the meet my, and again, these are frequently asked questions that we've been receiving. So when we, we do talk in here about all tenants and not, not only moral obligation, but legal obligation, as you know, with the, through the process. So we were just, this, these are the questions we're getting. I know my son's gone to Geo's for his haircut in the last 10 or 15 years. So there are a lot of tenants there, and they all have yes. to be addressed, and not one is more important than the no, other. Oh, no, oh, no, and, and frankly, I, I don't feel that that's what, again, like I, like I said, I caveated with I didn't get a chance to read it all because I had like two <laughs> minutes. Um, so, no, I don't think, I don't think, the town is saying or trying to say that the meat market's the only tenant there. But as we all know, public perception right. is reality, whether it is or it isn't. Mm -hmm. And public perception is, from most people I talk to, is that it's all focused on the meat market, which again, there's no disrespect to the meat market, that's not my point, is just that I would think it behooves people on this committee and the town management and government just to make it really clear like hey 
we, we, we care about all the tenants. And so that was my only point. And again, I did caveat it because I didn't get a chance to read it all. And good points. But, but thank, you. thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, Carol Meach, 248 Main Street, Precinct 2. Um, I think this might have been answered before, and I just have a question about how the ballot is going to go, where it's either a pass or, uh, let's see. The ballot question is pass it, you know, pass or not fail <laughs> for um, the location as it is Kirby Wadsworth building. Is there a way to pass or have the ballot have two different things, which is yes, the town wants a fire station and may not agree. I'm worried about that it's not gonna agree on the location, Kirby, Wadsworth area, um, but we need a fire station. So is there a way to do with a ballot so that the money mm -hmm. pass while everybody works out where that fire station would be? I don't know, that's just a question. Um, and then the, my question about the police station, we've heard a lot about how bad the building is over the last few meetings. So, as we talk about phase two, are we talking about phase two, the bridge? Are we talking about phase two of the, you know, the connection between <laughs> oh, the two okay. buildings? Or are we talking phase two, we need a new fire, new police station two, and is that gonna be another 40 million? I think it'd be helpful if that was clarified a little bit too. So that's all my thoughts, thank you. The, um, the vote in November is for a project, and the project includes the site and the bonding, they are not separated. Okay. So if you vote yes, it means you're voting for the site and the bonding. If you vote no, it means you're voting against the site and the bonding. Okay. And the um, as far as the police station is concerned, I think um, Jim Letiri mentioned that um, Kessel and Bulls has been contacted and they are going to present to the town council no, they're going to present it to us that we'll be presenting it at the public forum on, public, on, on uh, the 25th of September. So you'll see what that does involve as far as the police station is concerned. Oh, no, no, no. No, it would, it would no. include a, um, you know, whether it will include a connection, a physical connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iowa walk dock on the second floor and then it would include potentially an, an addition to the back and a rehab and gut process of the interior okay. yeah. now the town manager is here if, if he wants to you know say anything else about the actual ballot question in November yeah right the site has been chosen and that's the site that we will be voting on. I get that from the yeah. sample ballot. My concern is that right now blood is very in town. Exactly, and that's, what, that's why we're holding these meetings. We're trying to alleviate some of those issues. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, we'll do it. Yeah, no, thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Todd Sacco, uh, 41 Emerson Road. My presumption then is if we move to phase two, there will be another ballot initiative? Or is that? Yes, if that, another, I mean, that phase exclusion? two is not expected next year. Or, Thank you. But yes. And, and just to answer that more in depth, if, if there is ever a project done in the town that the town cannot support within its operating budget, it needs to go to the taxpayers to get approval. If there was a, an addition to you know, town hall that was a million dollars and the bond was you know, $300 a year that we could suffice within the operating budget, we would not need to go to a vote. But anything that's requiring us to go outside of the operating budget, we would need a vote of the town. Anybody on the committee have anything to say? Any correspondence? The only thing that I've gotten is mm -hmm. um, 
why can't part of the Wadsworth building be saved and still be able to put the police station there? And if you look at, what page is this? Is it the last page? And see um, where the actual building, the new building is going to be, you'll see why the Wadsworth building cannot be saved, any portion of it. Any correspondence from anybody else? Well, if, are you looking at the picture? Yeah. If you look, um, if you look at the um, at at that picture. Um, now, this if if so, if you were facing Wadsworth Building, the parking and the police station would be on your right. Right now, that's only a small driveway that goes in between the police station and the Wadsworth building. Now it's going to be parking for, is it 17 or 19 cars, plus the center to get in and out. So that already moves the building over. And then if you also look, you can see that the part where the base for the fire station is gonna be is 100 feet back from the sidewalk, but the actual entrance into the building is what, about a third of that? So I think that's, that's if you, I guess you have to look at it this way yeah. to appreciate mm -hmm. it, <laughs> okay, to see uh, you know, exactly what I was talking about. Yeah, I, got it. I mean, I'm not an architect. Is there any architects here? Oh, Chris is an architect. Is there anything else we should say about this picture? No, I think that uh, the first meeting there was comments made that while the building can't be saved, the materiality of it was included in the, in the architecture of the final envelope of the building. So I think it's worth noting that uh, for those concerned about the historic fabric of the Wadsworth building and its inclusion in town, that uh, fabric evolves, the historic nature evolves, and I think that you, reusing some of the masonry or bricks from that building uh, is the intent as I understand it, right? But, but the site plan itself, um, you know, I think that the goal, my, my understanding, right, of the goal is that the firehouses have all been compromised in terms of space, so to further compromise a new building at $40 million to try to save pieces of the old. Um, isn't advantageous to, to the town or, or to the fire department in the future. You know, so I think reusing parts of the exterior, reusing the masonry is probably a great way to keep that fabric, but I don't, I don't see on this site plan that you can keep the building itself. Yeah. If you look at um, current coming school, pieces of that, the cornerstone and other pieces, were brought over from the old Willis School to be incorporated into that building. And also, if you stand in front of the fire station on Pauline Street and look at the coming school and then look at the E.B. Newton School, you see the similarities in the roofing. Yeah, that's true. Mr. Lettieri. And another thing with the location of the building, one of the biggest factors when, look, when we looked at locations and uh, was one of the biggest standards now that new firehouses have is that every piece of equipment, so the largest piece of equipment you have is supposed to be able to leave the firehouse, have the door shut, and have that piece of apparatus still on the property, not on the sidewalk, not on the street. So which is why, you know, the Wadsworth building is basically on the sidewalk. Um, so this building's gonna be set back 100 feet, so you know, the ladder truck comes out, it's still gonna be able to sit on the apron of the building without even going near the, you know. So that was a major concern when looking at locations. Yeah. Also to add to that for spacing size, when we come back from a call, we're no longer, a, a, a standard now is we're no longer to back up the, the fire truck or the, uh, the engine into the bay. We have to go around and pull through now. So now we have to go all the way around. So that's a big space issue as well. Oh, business. We talked about the brochure. Do you want any, anything else about the brochure? Um, I have old business. Go. Cool. Chief, I wanted to mention um, uh, an open house, two open houses. Yep. Uh, one on September 9th, 
uh, and one on October 21st. So it's gonna be September 9th, is that a Saturday? That's a Saturday, yep, they're both Saturdays. <coughs> and what was the other date? Uh, October 21st. October 21st. So that's the date, they're both Saturdays, and I believe he said it was gonna be nine to 11? Nine to 12. Nine to 12. Yep. The firehouses, both firehouses, September 9th, October 21st, from nine to 12, both the firehouses will be open to the public to be able to go in and tour. And the chief also said that he would have on a couple of extra firefighters in case the firefighters that are in the station have to respond to a call. So you will have the opportunity to go in and actually see the conditions of the fire stations as they stand now. Karen, I might want to, I'm not sure if it's both stations. He might have just wanted to do one, but can we clarify that? Yeah, we'll, we'll have to clarify that one. It's definitely going to be uh, Pauline For Street. For sure, yes, yeah. it's the Pauline Street. But we're not sure about Shirley Street, but definitely Pauline Street. You want to talk about the new, the, what little information we have on the new fire stations? We did, um, Chief Wiley had recently taken a tour of Lexington and um, Woburn Fire Stations. And we're going to have pictures on the website so you'll be able to take a look at it. And when you look at the Lexington Station, it is it looks like it's been there for 50 years. They did the architecture in a way that it just conforms with the town. It conforms with what it's around. It's in the center of town. Um, so... The Lexington Fire Station was opened in 2020, and they have other fire stations, so it's not as big as what we're proposing. It's, it, was 20, it is 26,000 square feet. It cost them $22 million, and so this started in 2018. So again, if you assume 10% increase a year, it's pretty much, and if you do the per square foot, it's pretty much where we are. Um, the architect for that building was Tecton, T-E-C-T-O-N. I encourage people to take a look at their website. Again, it's T-E-C-T-O-N Architects. And this is the showpiece of everything that they've done. It's such an incredibly well-designed and thought-out building. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at that. And we also took a look at the Wuben Fire headquarters, which was just opened this, in the spring. Um, 27,000 square feet, um, so actually a little bit bigger than Lexington, built three years later at um, a long, it was 19 plus seven million in mechanical cost, so it was $26 million, but um, different design, same construction company. So those are two fire stations, or two fire headquarters. They have less bays than what we're looking at because again, both cities have uh, multiple fire stations. So they did not need to put every piece of apparatus in. They both do have uh, ambulance service in them. So it's, uh, it's good to take a look at. I would encourage you, and we will have pictures of both um, fire stations on the website. Any committee members have anything else to say tonight? Mr. Town Manager, anything? All right, um, as it stands now, our next meeting is Thursday, September 7th. It's because next week, Monday is the holiday and Tuesday is the council meeting. So we will be meeting on Thursday, September 7th. We probably will be here. Mm -hmm in the um, delay of. And our public hearing, again, the first public hearing, is Monday, September 11th, probably here. No, the, it will be at the auditorium at the new middle high school. And it will be September 11th at six o'clock. Okay. <laughs> if we have nothing else, any other business, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So made. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Powell, second by Mr. Letiri. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.